Hi everybody, this is Dark Storm Comic Reviews here, here with a review on Green Goblin Issue 2. Uh, and I'm just kind of continuing my Green Goblin reviews, so kind of continuing the series. I, I reviewed the first issue if you want to check out that video, so. But yeah, here's the cover. And as you can see in this issue, the Green Goblin will most definitely be fighting the Rhino, so. I also like these title cards too, On the Horns of a Dilemma, where the last one was the most maniacal superhero of all. It's really, really cool. Some cool titles. And, uh, yeah, I like them. And here's the cover. Got the Green Goblin here. Got the glider. I like the design of this glider and the smoke in the background. It's really, really cool. And then we got the Rhino right here. It's pretty neat. And, sorry about sorry about the finger. So, yeah, our story starts off. And, um, it starts off, and basically, um, you know, as I discussed in the last issue review, Phil Yurick is the current Green Goblin, and if you don't know who Phil Yurick is, he is the nephew of Ben Yurick. And Ben Yurick is like a r investigative reporter for the Bugle. He was also the first one to figure out Daredevil's secret identity, so that's pretty awesome too. So yeah, um, so Phil Yurick is basically talking about his life, and he's kind of contemplating his life, and he's, he's asking himself the question, you know, what the heck is he supposed to do now? You know, now that he's got all these goblin powers, he's got all the gear... And, and the fact that he's also dropped out of college, like, he's asking himself, like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, what's my, what's my goal in life? What's my end goal? So he's basically just talking about that, and he's talking about his, uh, he's also talking about how, how awesome it is being the Green Goblin and how much he's enjoying it. You know, he never thought he'd have the chance to become a super costume dude, you know, a superhero, so he's excited about that. He's basically just kind of talking about how he became the Green Goblin, you know, he's going back and thinking about how it all began. He talks about how... Him and his Uncle Ben discovered the Osborne hideout and how he got the goblin gear. And then he talked about how, um, you know, how he saved his uncle from the criminals. And so, yeah, it's a really, it's kind of just going, um, kind of just discussing how he got his powers and abilities. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat. Um, anyway, yeah, but anyway, so he's still talking about, uh, he's talking about how when he puts on the goblin suit, he gets all these increased powers and abilities. But without him, he's still pretty much just a watch out, a washout. You know, he's pretty much still just a plain old Phil Yurick. He's very weak, very wimpy without the suit. As you can see, he's trying to lift his weight right here. So you can just see how weak he is. But yeah, anyways, so we get to the next page. We find out that his friend Freddie Glazier, who I talked about in the last issue, yeah, he comes by his apartment and he's basically just coming to hang out, coming to chill with them. And he talks basically about how. Man, you're, you know, your apartment is just so crappy. Like, you need a blowtorch to fix up this place. And it's just kind of fun, friendly banter. He's not doing it to be mean. It's just kind of like fun, friendly banter. Banter. So, yeah, he's talking to Phil. And Freddy's basically telling him, like, Hey, man, you need to you need to watch out because Rico the Sigo, you know, the guy, the crooks from the last issue who uh, captured his Uncle Ben. Yeah, so Freddy's like, Hey, you know, you need to be on the lookout for Rico, man. He's after you. He, he escaped from prison. And... You need to you need to be careful. So he's just Freddy's just kind of trying to warn Phil. So and yeah, it's a, there's a funny scene in this where um, you know, Phil has the goblin mask like sitting on like a light bulb or something like a light, and so so Freddy can totally see it. But thankfully, Phil acts fast and he ends up putting the hockey mask on the goblin mask to hide it. So it's pretty 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 funny scene. I like it. But anyways, we get to the next scene and um, Phil's like okay. Um, you know what? Maybe I should just go come clean. Maybe I should just reveal my secret identity as the Green Goblin to my Uncle Ben. You know, he's an investigative reporter. He'll understand. But then we get the scene where Ben Yurick's like, trust me, you know, he's being, he's being questioned by the cops. He's being interviewed. And Ben's like, uh, yeah, I want I want this crazy criminal just off, just off the streets as much as you guys do. Like, I'm totally not for this Goblin guy. I totally want him off the streets. And so Phil, and so Phil's like, um, okay, yeah, um... Scratch, scratch that idea. Scratch that plan. So he's like, I'm not gonna tell him my secret identity. So then, um, so then a girl he's attracted to, who's known as Lynn Walsh, comes comes into his view, and she's like, Hey, Phil, um, have you seen have you seen this new Green Goblin guy yet? I think he's, you know, she's he's basically she's basically telling him like, Yo, I think he's really awesome. Yeah, I'd love to do a story. I'd love to do a story on him. You know, doing a story on him would be awesome. Cause Lynn is trying to be, uh, she's trying to get into the reporting business. She wants to become a reporter. Kind of like Ben Yurick. She wants to get up on the uh, economic ladder, the job ladder, so to speak. She's like, I'd love to do a story for the Goblin. And then Phil finds his out and she's like, well, she, uh, Lynn's uh, interested in the Green Goblin, huh? That's very, very cool. You know, it's very, very awesome. And, you know, maybe I can get her an exclusive interview. Because, you know, he's crushing on, on Lynn, so it's kind of his crush right now. 
Anyways, get to the next story. And Phil's just kind of walking around the office. He's walking around until he hears that his uncle is making contact with somebody. Ben's making a con Ben Yerrick is basically making a call to somebody, and it's like a part of this uh, investigative objective. And the person he makes the call to is a guy named Johnny Dare, who is apparently, I think, a famous football player. Yeah, he's a famous football player. He's part of this, like, famous uh, sports team. Sports team, so yeah, football players. So Phil over here has been talking to the football player. He's, it feels like, oh, can I meet him? Can I meet him, please? Can I meet him? You know, just like any fan geek would freak out over meeting a celebrity. That's kind of how he's uh, approaching this. So Ben Ben's like, fine, just, you know, act cool about it, act calm, you know, you know be cool. And so, um, yeah, and so they get to the, uh, get to the meeting where they're talking with, um, they get, Ben and Phil go to meet John, Johnny Dare where they kind of talk and they kind of discuss something. Apparently Johnny Dare is tied into some criminal activities and, jo and Johnny Dare's like, okay, look, I know the cops can help me out, but I need someone, buddy, somebody to betray me as a football legend, a football hero. So, I, so, and, you know, Ben, since you're an investigative reporter, I think I can count on you to spin me in a good word, you know, spin me in a good word or tale so so yeah been in a so yeah johnny and ben are just kind of talking it over feels like man you know i always looked up to johnny as like this superstar you know this sports superstar it's it's weird to imagine it was just this average guy this black guy right here that's jo that's johnny dare this sports hero you know there's his daughter right over here but yeah it feels like i never imagined this guy to just be an average dude so Phil's just kind of walking down you know He's like, man, if man, if Johnny can can get that kind of fame and fortune, I wonder how much fame and fortune I can get as the Green Goblin. So, so we get to the next page, and um, Phil's just kind of standing there minding his own business, and then we see none other none other than a Human Torch spring up out of nowhere. In this Human Torch, he's going to solve a crime. He kind of just springs up out of nowhere. It's a really cool scene. I, I like seeing all the papers fly and everything, and the people getting all freaked out over it. Or, I guess excited, not really freaked out, but it's a cool scene. And then once Phil kind of spots Johnny Johnny Storm and him like going to do a superhero thing, Phil's like, yeah, yeah, I bet I could really cash in on this Green Goblin thing. I bet I could gain some popularity. And that's kind of what I like about this character in the story is that, you know, you got your heroes like Spider-Man, you got your villains like Green Goblin and Venom, you got your anti-heroes like the Punisher, which, okay, well, Venom is technically an anti-hero, but you know what I mean. You got your anti-heroes like the Punisher and everybody like that. The cool thing about Phil is, and what makes him a very interesting character, is that he's not looking to really be a hero. He really just wants to, he really just wants the perks of being a hero. He doesn't really want to do the hero stuff, necessarily, he just wants the perks. You know, he wants the fame, and he wants the fortune, he wants the riches and the money. It's basically what, he, what he's using the Green Goblin identity to do. He's not out to really be a hero, more or so less as he wants to be rich and famous, you know. I think that's really cool, it's a really unique dynamic that you don't see a lot of a lot of superpower people in comics really go through you know just using their powers to be famous and rich and stuff i think that's really cool i like that he's trying to use it for more for popularity so yeah we see green goblin fly around he's like okay I, I think i can turn this green goblin gig into some good cash i think i can turn this into some fame, fame and fortune you know and i bet i'd become even more famous if i joined up with the superhero team and so he's looking through like files and stuff to figure out the type of team he could team up with obviously he can't team up with the avengers because they're more high profile but he finds a team that could work for him which is called uh the new warriors so he starts heading to the new warriors to go check them out so yeah and here's i like this picture right here with the smoke for the cool i like seeing the show smoke right here Yep. This cool mask Sorry, I'm just trying to get a good picture for you guys right here. I really like this scene. Uh, but anyways, Jeff, he ends up going to the New Warriors headquarters, but sadly he doesn't make like the best entrance you could really make. He kind of crashes into one of the team members, and um, yeah, some a fight scene ensues. They're like, "Hey, who is this guy? He's very creepy." And so yeah, so it's like, who's this creepy guy just crashing into our pad? Like, who's this guy dressed up as a goblin? Why is he crashing into our pad? So the new warriors kind of end up fighting the Green Goblin, and we get a really cool battle. We get a pretty cool battle. You know, so Green Goblin's flying around. He's like, you know, I don't want to fight. I don't want to pick a fight with anybody. And Speedball tries to, uh, this guy named Speedball, by the way, tries to tag him. 
And the goblin's like, no, nah, I'm gonna get you. So he throws a grenade, a pumpkin, a pumpkin bomb at him. A pumpkin, you know, gas grenade. And so then this guy tries to, like, absorb the gas with his uh, vapor powers. But yeah, then we get this fight, and the new warriors are just kind of going after him. You know, Turbo, you know, throws a turbo punch at him and, like, knocks him, knocks him out off his glider. It's pretty cool. You get a good scene of that. It's a pretty cool scene. And then, uh, but thankfully, the cool thing about this, this Queen Goblin is, is that he actually comes with, like, a, these goblin skates, I guess is what you would call them. So even when he's knocked off his glider, he can still use his skates to, like, fly around, which is really cool. I like it. Sort of like goblin skates. Kind of cool. So, yeah, they're just still fighting. And then Green Goblin's like, okay, hey, everybody, let's chill. Let's chill. Let's, uh, let's talk this out, you know? So, uh, so they're like, okay, we'll, we'll talk, I guess. And Green Goblin's like, hey, I didn't come to fight you guys. I just wanted to join up with you. I wanted to be part of your little team. And so basically they're just kind of like, are, are you serious? You know, you're like a, you're a bad guy. You're the freaking Green Goblin. You know, you're a, you're a villain. You, you really think we'd let you on our team? And then, um, and the, um, and then the, and this one guy is like, um, oh, come on guys, let's give him a chance. You know, I'm, I'm all about giving chances. You know, the new warriors, you know, we're all about, we're all about fighting crimes that the bigger teams won't touch, you know? You know, and I'm willing to give you a chance. You know, you may look like a criminal, but I'm willing to give you a chance. And Phil's like, uh, this guy's a dork. Like, what, what, what's up? What's up with him? This guy's like a freaking geek, and feels like, you know what? I'm gonna pass. So then he's like, uh, you know, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, let me, let me think on it. You know, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not joining up with you guys. Like, you guys are freaking geeks. Mainly it's because he don't want to team up with them. Mainly because he thinks they're geeks, I guess, and also because they require a little too much commitment. You know, and he doesn't want to really be tied down to any members or any teams. You know, and so he's like, yeah, hey, I'm just gonna bail. But then he finds out that once he gets back, then he finds out when he gets back to his uh, apartment, he finds out that Rico is actually kind of telling him. So he's kind of getting a little nervous. He's like, ooh, great. He knows where I live. He knows where, where I'm at now. That's that's just dandy. You know, we get this cool scene where he parks his glider. And then, you know, we see him take off the mask. And he's like, you know, what the heck am I supposed to do now? And he basically asks that question throughout the issue. It's uh, pretty cool. We get to the next scene. And, um, you know, Phil's just kind of, he's filing stuff because his uncle's like, hey, I need you to go through these file cabinets. I need you to file some stuff for me. Phil's like, all right. And um, so then Phil's kind of, so then Johnny Dare ends up calling Phil and Johnny's like, hey, Ben, are you there? Ben, I was hoping we could talk to you, you know, about the big bust happening tonight. Instead, he ends up calling Phil instead of Ben. So then he's like, Phil, is that you? And he's like, uh, yeah, I guess so. And he's like, okay, well, tell your uncle that this bus is going down, all right? Tell your uncle that the bus is going down. And Phil's like, okay, sure. So, uh, Phil finds out the bus is going down, he's thinking, you know, maybe I could go, uh, maybe I could go help out, maybe I could go save Johnny, you know, I don't want Johnny to get hurt, you know, I like him, I look up to him, he's a celebrity, so then Phil's like, it's, it's time to, uh, it's time to get into my goblin gear and go fight, go save Johnny, so he does, you get this cool scene of Phil in his goblin gear, it's funny because there's this line about, like, he's trying to come up with, like, a catchphrase, you know, like, it's a, it's goblin gliding time, and he goes dumb, and then he goes, it's time to get mean and green, and he goes dumber, and it's, it's and it's like, you know, it's, it's like, I gotta come up with a catchphrase that sounds cool, and it's kind of a funny scene, because he's trying to come up with, like, all these, uh, battle cries, yeah, battle cries, we call them, he's trying to come up with, like, these battle cries, but they all sound, like, really lame and dumb, and it's, it's just a funny scene, I like it, really funny scene, and then we, and then we get to, and then we get to, and then we get, we get to, Okay, so then we get to the scene where you know, Phil ends up finding Johnny, ends up seeing him, and then uh, and we see that Johnny's there, he's kind of waiting for the meeting or the bus to happen, like I was talking about my other issue. And so then Johnny ends up meeting the rhino, he's like, you know, uh, you know, my employers will be very, very disappointed in you, Johnny, you know. And, um, because I, I guess, I'm trying to remember, I think Rhino's like a part of the bus or something, so he's like a... You know, this bus was supposed to go down a certain way, Johnny, and, you know, you've really disappointed me, you know. So, I'm going to have to take care of some unfinished business. So then, you know, Rhino takes off the trench coat and he's like, you know, you've really inconvenienced me, Mr. Dare. You know, it's supposed to be my mother and, you know, and the Rhino just doesn't like to keep his mom waiting. So he gets, uh, he gets very aggressive, he gets very angry, and we get this cool scene where Rhino, like, crashes into this cop car. It's a really, really cool scene. Um, it's a very, very neat scene. I like it. And while Rhino's crashing into the cop car, Phil's like, what? It's the Rhino? It's the freaking Rhino? I can't take on the freaking Rhino. Here, sorry, I'll get a better picture. I can't take on the freaking Rhino. He's just invincible. He's too huge. I can't take him on. So then, um, 
Green Goblin's like, you know, maybe if I, like, ram my glider into him, it'll stun him or something. So the Green Goblin, like, rams his glider into the rhino. The rhino's like, hey, what was that? And Green Goblin, and Phil's like, seriously? That, like, hey, what was that? Like, that's all he's, he's saying, you know. I throw my glider, my whole glider down on him. That's all I can say. Like, I feel the joke down my entire spine, but he didn't feel anything. It's just kind of funny scene. It's also cool because the rhino actually thinks that the Green Goblin is Harry Osborn. Not, uh, not Phil Urich. He doesn't know that Phil's the goblin. He, so he thinks that, like, you know, because Harry Osborn's dead, obviously. So he thinks that, uh, Harry has risen back from the dead and oh, and everything. So he's like, you know, Harry, is that you, Harry Osborn? He's like, and so, yeah, it's kind of funny. So the rhino's like, uh, you know, I'm trying to do a job here, goblin. You're really inconveniencing me. You need, you better get out of here. And, you know, I, I know we used to be friends in the past, but if you don't, if you don't get out of my job, you don't if you don't stop bothering me. I am gonna you know kick your butt. So, so Ryan's like, I am gonna get you. So then like uh, you know, Phil's like you know, and so the cops start shooting at him. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good shot here. I know the glare is kind of a problem. Pretty cool. And um, so yeah, Phil's like, you know what? The Rhino's involved. Cops are involved. They're trying to shoot at me. I'm thinking I just need to bag this scene. I think I need to just get out of here. I need to leave. And this kind of tells us also about Phil as a character that he's not really confrontational. You know, like Spider-Man who would get into fights and everything. Phil's not like that. He doesn't like to get injured. He's not really into getting into the confrontation, which is what most heroes would do. You know, but Phil's like, you know, there's too much going on. I need to get out of here. But then he sees that Johnny Dare is uh, about to get killed by the rhino because the rhino's about, like, literally running right, like, right in his path. So then Phil's like, man, Johnny, you know, I don't want him to get hurt. So then... Phil's like, I gotta save him, I gotta save him, you know, so then Phil runs in and he saves him. And it's a really cool scene, I like this, you know, we actually get to see Phil as the Green Goblin, you know, actually save somebody. So it's pretty neat, and he saves him, like, right before the rhino takes him out, so it's a cool scene. So yeah, Phil saves Johnny, he gets him out of the way. Uh, there's this funny scene where, like, uh, Johnny thanks the Green Goblin, or thanks Phil, and Phil's like, oh man, he, I can't believe he thanked me, he thanked me. He thanked me, and he's just all, he's all starstruck, you know, it's like if a celebrity said thank you to a random person, you know, they're all starstruck and stuff, and it's, it's a cool scene, I like it, it's funny. Uh, and then we get to the next scene, and you know, the cop, the cop is still trying to shoot at Phil, he's trying to shoot him down. You see Phil drop, drop onto one of these crates, I'm sorry, my hand's shaky. That's probably going to be a bit of an inconvenience. Let me see if I can switch the, make it stop shaking. Yeah, anyways, Phil's climbing around the crates. The copter's trying to shoot him down. Phil lifts up a crate because he's like, I need to take down the rhino. I need to take him down. So he throws he throws a crate onto the rhino. Make sure I get these pictures for you guys good so you know what's happening. He gets a crate. He throws it down. It hits the rhino. You see, and it, he's like, whoa. You know, I threw the crate down. And I think the crate actually hit our rhino's briefcase. He sees all this money. And, he, and we get to a pretty cool scene where it feels like, you know, man, just look at all that money. I mean, I could get back into college. I could, I could give my life a little direction. He's kind of thinking about, he's kind of, he's kind of having these like villainous, villainous intentions. Kind of leading to the fact that maybe he could turn evil someday. I mean, we don't know. It's, at this time frame, we don't know what's going to happen to him. So we kind of have these, uh, I guess, villainous kind of, well, they're not really villainous thoughts. Everybody has these thoughts. But like, you know. He's thinking like, you know, I could use this money to get myself back to college. I could have a life, you know, all this other stuff. It's kind of a cool scene. But then I'm just thinking that the rhino, like, throws this, like, gigantic, like, crate at him. Right here, let me get a good scene of this. Rhino gets the crate. Yeah, he throws it at the goblin. And yeah, it's a cool scene. And as he's throwing the crate at the, uh, at the goblin, you know, he ends up, like, crashing the helicopter right here, so... Pretty cool scene. Pretty neat scene. It cra the 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 crate crashes into the helicopter. The helicopter's going down, but thankfully the the guy in the helicopter ejects, so he's able to land the river. So all, all is safe, all is well. The the goblin hops back onto his glider, and he ends up uh he ends up flying away. It's like you know, yep, the cop the pilot's safe, everything's good. I'm free to leave. But before I do that, I'm gonna tie up one of the sand. And so the rhino's like, you know what, you've gotten into my mission, you've gotten in, into my uh, objective, into my bus. So, you know, I'm just going to take you out now. I'm going to take you out now, and, and, you know, you are dead. I'm taking you out. 
So the Rhino is cool because the Rhino actually builds this, uh, oh yeah, down here he builds this uh, makeshift ramp to reach the Goblin. And it, uh, it seems like he's about to be successful until the Goblin ends up, like, literally grabbing him by the horn. It's a really cool scene because, you know, in other comics you normally don't see, like, two Spider-Man villains going up against each other. Normally it's just Spider-Man, Venom, or Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. You know, this one you actually get to see Rhino and the Green Goblin go up against each other. And this is a really cool scene. I like this. The Goblin literally just grabs him, like, right by the horn and literally just, like, starts taking off with him. And he's able to do that because while the Rhino is definitely strong and he's able to, like, crush, crash through a lot of stuff, the Goblin's more agile. And he, he, has, he has the strength that Rhino has plus the agility. So he's a lot faster. So he's able to take him out a little more easily. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so Green Goblin picks the Rhino up and he's basically just saying, like, you know, you could have killed those guys. You know, you caused, and you see the copter down here. You caused a lot, of, you could you, you could have almost caused a lot of deaths, things could have gone bad, like what were you thinking man, like seriously. So then Green Goblin's flying around with him while he's just holding on to him by the horn, it's kind of funny. And then we, uh, we see the Green Goblin, and he drops Rhino off with this pier, literally like just drops him like right here. And then um, yeah, Green Goblin drops him, and Rhino just like slams right to the ground, slams right into the pier. Yep. And, uh, yeah, basically the story end, the story ends and the Green Goblin basically feels just like, you know, I can't believe it. I can't believe I took down the Rhino. This is crazy. This is insane. This is awesome. You know, my first real victory is the Green Goblin, besides defeating Rico in the first issue, of course. You know, saving his uncle. But this is really his first victory against the, against the superpower bad guy. So he's, he's really excited about that. So he's like, yes, my first victory as the, uh, as the Green Goblin. This is exciting. This is cool. And so, yeah, the story ends and he's just like, um... Yep, I'm still going to keep being the Green Goblin for for a bit, so that's how the story ends. Um, yeah, and that was Green Goblin issue two. Uh, it's a really good issue, I like it. I thought the first one was... Let me get back to the cover here. I thought the first one was a good setup. I thought it was a good setup and a good starting point, but I like it. I like issue two because, it again, it dove more into, dove into more character aspects of what makes Phil a good character. Not a good character, I guess, but an interesting character. I like the fact that he's more or less using his powers and abilities for fame and fortune rather than, oh, I'm going to go kill these bad guys or oh, I'm going to go save these people, you know, like most, uh, or I'm just going to take over the world, you know, like most, like, uh, heroes, villains, and even anti heroes think, you know. I like that he's using his power more for fame and fortune and selfish, selfishness like that, you know, I think that's very interesting and I think that, you know, I think that's really cool. I also like how he in, like, confrontational shows that he's. Shows that he's kind of a coward and he doesn't really like getting into fights, so I thought I thought that was a cool, interesting character core. But yeah, I liked it. Um, thought it was a good story. I liked it. Ooh, seeing the um, one thing I didn't mention is I like seeing the Green Goblin and the Rhino fight. You know, I thought that was really cool. Cause, you know, you normally don't get to see that in comics. You normally don't normally don't get to see two Spider-Man villains fight each other. So I thought that was really cool. But yeah, this has been um Green Goblin uh, issue two, and um, I'll uh, catch you guys later.